Hey everybody, we've been getting some calls about real estate. Mm -hmm. That stuff that went up forever and is going to never come down, it turns out that it is coming down and we're starting to get phone calls about how bad it is starting to get in other places. I haven't noticed it too bad around here just yet, but it always starts somewhere else first. Mm -hmm. And you want you let them know what the subscriber said. Yeah, it's just been a couple people have called in and it's really awesome to hear from you guys across, well, Daniel Edgley just did a video in Vegas. You guys saw that, I'm sure, that watch us. You guys probably watch him too. Um, I've had a couple people call in. One was from, um, let's see, was it Tennessee? I think it was National Let me Tennessee. Let what Dan said. Dan said, yep. I talked to him for a while on the phone. It was 40 houses within a mile the last mm -hmm. time he was there. And this time, it was 100 houses within a mile. That is substantial mm -hmm. in one month. Mm -hmm. So keep going. No, it is. And it, it is happening. <coughs> you don't really hear a lot on the news, but it is. I talked to uh, a lady today. She measures houses uh, for like when you go to sell a house, she measures it to see the square footage they put in the MLS and all that. Her son-in-law is a broker and uh, he said it's about 75% down, I think around the Nashville, Tennessee area. And all his, he's a broker and a lot of his agents have just like, they've left the business. They said, we can't keep up. There's no, you, they just, they can't, they're not getting sales. Lenders are saying the same thing. They're calling, they're like, hey, we're not getting deals. The problem is too, is by the time they get it under contract, they process the loan and then they get it to closing. The interest rates has gone up to the point that those buyers can no longer afford that house anymore. You guys don't realize, but when you guys go to buy that house, if you have a fixed rate, if it goes up just a half of a percentage, you guys sometimes can't aff afford that note. A lot of people can't. And here's a tip too. If you ever decide to buy a house, do not go open up any credit cards, buy any furniture, do anything <laughs> until you get that house sold. Solid That's a, advice. Right that there. is a side note tip. But um, anyway, so I'm getting more and more calls. I'm talking to more and more lenders, real estate agents. Uh, I talked to another awesome real estate agent the other day. I believe she was in the Texas area. No, it was Oklahoma. And she said she has been jumping up and down and trying to tell her clients for two years now, you guys, I'm telling you, if you buy, you better try to be very careful. You're buying at the top of the market and she is seeing a decline right now. And the sad thing is, is we're going to see some of these people that have bought too, have paid too much for their house. And if they get in a jam, then they are going to be upside down. And this is where we had a question about, can you please explain the difference between foreclosures and short sales? So I thought well, we would get into that a little bit unless right, you want to talk a little more. Just a second, more. because mm -hmm. there's some other things that are going on that is going to slow down housing. Okay. And, well, this has to do, Eric works uh, with windows. Yes. Low case high rise. Now, some people watching us are living in a high rise. That's right. Uh, but this is more of the business side of things. Uh, you've got builders that get stretched out. And I've met a couple that have gone belly up mm -hmm. uh, in 2008 mainly. But it was because they, you know, they get so far out and something happens and they don't get paid. Now, I'm experiencing slow payment on one of my businesses. And this is kind of case in point. He says, I work with windows, low case high rise. Uh, an operable window pass-through or drive-through window kit has doubled lead time to nearly 20 weeks. You That's cannot sell anything without windows in it. Nope. 20 weeks is a long time for something to happen to the market. Yeah. So try to, as you're getting into these investments and things, just know that that kind of stuff's going on and try to protect yourself where you can, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Even homes. So you guys, you're going to run into this, and we ran into this with one of our rent houses trying to sell it. If you can't get a window in, if you can't get a stove in on some of these type loans, you can't sell that house. The appraiser's not going to write off on it. And this is stuff you got to start thinking about ahead of time. you got to say, I've got to have this stuff. If it takes me this long to get this, uh, this in, heck, we even had somebody to drive to Dallas for us three hours, three and a half, just to get, what was it, a refrigerator, a stove so we could close? Well, I remember which one. It was an appliance. It was a, so we could close. But anyway... So you want to go to the short sales? Yeah, now? let's cover you. We can cover. Okay. So if you're new to the channel, thank you for being here. And thank for all the new subscribers. Thank you for hitting the like button. I always forget to say it in front of the video, but I just hate to beg for it. I, it's part of it. So I'd appreciate it if you did that. But this is, we're going to start talking more real estate as the crash happens. And it's going to look so ugly. Nobody's going to want to invest in real estate. But we're going to start kind of talking about it. I'm not trying to get you excited about it uh, yet. There will be a time to get excited about it. Interest rates can be high, and everybody's thinking real estate's, you know, just the 
bane of everybody's existence and nobody can afford it and all this stuff. Well, that's when we're going to try to buy, when blood's in the streets. So we're going to start talking about foreclosures, short sales, and auctions as well. I'd like to start getting into that a little bit. And uh, yeah, go ahead and, and want, she's the real estate agent, not me. So why don't uh, you decipher? He's done this with me. He's as good as, as I am. But so basically a short sale and a foreclosure, the big difference is one's a bank owned and one is still a seller owned. If you're an investor or even a buyer, your prime thing is if you can get a short sale. And it's actually a joke on words because a short sale actually takes a quiet <laughs> a bit of time. We've been down that path. And, but it's actually a great, it's a great thing if you can help someone get out of that home. So here's what happens with a short sale. So you've got somebody that's upside down in their home and they cannot afford their mortgage anymore, possibly behind on a couple months on their payments, yet it has not gone to foreclosure yet. The bank does not own that. And we've come across a, a, this a couple of times. If you can find that seller and you can say, hey, how can I help you get out of this home? One, it's not gonna ruin your credit score. Two, it's gonna help you get out of it and you hopefully can get a little bit of some money, if maybe just a smidge, if nothing else. Two, it also helps the buyer, three, it helps the buyer or if you're an investor or whatever, because you still have someone living in home, at the house, the utilities are still on, you can see what's working and not working with the, the bank owns it, sometimes it's completely shut off. There's just a lot of good things. The seller can even help you try to fix something sometimes. Um, we've even said, hey, you know, we'll, we'll help you fix this just so that we can get this past an appraiser. So there's so many things that's just really great about a short sale. So in your head, when you look at it, think a short sale, not joke on words. It's probably going to take a little time, but it's great because... It takes because forever. It can sometimes. It's like sometimes. it'll never close. It, it was can. our first one. Our first one was a short sale. It was. Yes, it was. And it took a little It took a little and, while. Uh, Had I not known the process, it would have been very frustrating. And I'm just a bull. I'll just knock on doors and figure out who lives there and walk around. Stacy says, oh, don't go in the backyard. Don't. <laughs> I'm going to find out who lives there and I'm going to find what's going on. And I'm going to, you know, I want to buy your house. Okay, well, it's kind of... You know, and that, you'll start getting the story. And it's like, okay, hey. Yep. I've got a solution for you. Right, for a short sale. So just keep that in mind. A short sale is still seller owned, hasn't gone to the bank yet. It's a really good possibility. And it saves their credit. And it saves their credit. So it's, yeah. a, it's a win-win so, But win it just everybody. takes a little bit of time. you got to have patience. And you've got to know how to go navigate through the process. The, second th the, the other one is foreclosure. That means the bank already has it. Um, the seller is completely out of the picture. doesn't matter if you contact them or not. They have nothing to say in the matter anymore. It's gone. It's over. Typically, most foreclosures hire someone, an agent in that area, and they're going to represent it. They're going to winterize it. So that means a lot of times the utilities aren't going to be turned on. You're going to have to buy it as is. You really don't know what you're getting into. On the other hand, you can get a good deal, but sometimes it's just a little bit more of the unknowns. The good thing is, if you can find out the bank that owns it, you might be able to get a little bit of an in, but you're going to have to have an agent to help you, or you're going to have to do some legwork on that. We've done that also. So just the foreclosures are already bank on. The utilities are usually off. You get no compensation. You get no help with uh, expenses. You get no f anything being fixed. It's So if you're a buyer and not a, an investor, you get no help with closing costs. So that's kind of where you run on that a little bit. So hopefully that makes sense just a little bit. If you're, as far as auctions go, there's a couple of different auctions. Well, you gotta let's go back just a little bit. Okay, so the, the, for the short sale, yeah. If you're if you can find that person first, yes. If you can look, drive around, look for properties that the grass is growing up. It looks like you know, there's mail falling out of the mailbox. There's uh, you know you can approach whoever owns the property. And say, hey, I'm interested in buying your house. The bank will more than likely want to work with you before oh, they I assume said that. all that stuff. So it's kind of like you're coming to the yes. bank and saying, hey, I want to buy this house, and you don't have to mess with it. I should have said that. That's how He's you right. get the deal. That's the deal that they would yes. like. Right. And I think they're going to be, there's going to be, well, it's when foreclosures start to pile up, short sales are going to look really, really good to banks. You're right. Well, so you, that's what we want to look You for. necessarily can't go to it, but you can get that buyer to go, I mean, the yeah. seller. You can get to that the seller. That was the, yeah. Yeah. So as a right. buyer, if I'm right, you're, no, you're right. I should have mentioned that. Well, you're, you're so right. right. <laughs> you're right. I need you as much as you need me. So you're, he's right. And I should have mentioned that. So that is true. So you get that buyer to, or the seller, sorry, the seller to go to the bank and say, hey, you guys, I have a buyer. I know I'm upside down on this house, but I can get out of this. And that the bank has determined what is the bottom dollar that they're going to take. And hopefully you can work out a deal. 
Um, if you guys can find that as investors are buyers, that is one of the sweet spots that I always tell people to look for. They're a little hard to find. You got to know how to look for them, but that is a really good, I would take those over foreclosures any days or auctions. Yeah, and it comes down to you walking up and knocking on the door. It does. Finding out who the water bill goes to, finding out just whatever it takes. You find the house that you want in a good area, find the worst property in the best neighborhood and do whatever it takes to find out who owns it. And 90% of the time, you're going to come up empty handed. But that 1% of the time, you'll make yep. a lot of money. Yep. You'll find you might, a good deal. You might want to have somebody in it for a year and sell it. We did that to two of them. We did. You know, did. so just know you're one deal away from making a lot of money. I'm not yep. going to talk about how much. But uh, I really want to. I really want to push this real estate yes. stuff. And it's not. It's not. It's not for every single person, and it's not for every single area. Uh, like right now, our area. That's not what we're doing right now. I'm stepping back. Uh, but there's some places, like from what I understand, Nashville right now is possibly going to be that area pretty soon. Um, they're already starting to to see where there's more and more houses. Vegas starting to see, but our area is always six months behind. California, I think, is already starting to see it a little bit. So it just depends on your area, and that's kind of what you have to look for. But yeah, like he said, walk around, look at the worst house in the drive, neighborhood. Just drive through different streets on yep. your way home from work. That's what I used to do. Yep. My drive husband would be like, dollars. "We ever gonna get home?" And I'd drive around real slow and look, and then you'd pick out a few. That way, on your Saturday or Sunday, whatever you can go back and investigate. But you can drive and cover a lot of ground and just kind of, you know, you'll see a car there and then it'll be gone and you'll see maybe it over at the neighbor's house. So you can maybe go over to the neighbor's house and, and, and yep. talk to them. I've done that before. You name it, I've done it. Yes, he has. I do whatever. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and move it on to uh, auctions. Because so, I okay. we auctions. have struck out there. All right, so auctions are a tricky thing because you've got a couple different auctions. One, you've got auctions that the banks are also bidding on. Then you've got um, tax auctions, but let's just go with the ones at the banks. The, so a lot of times you'll show up at these auctions and they will go up for auction, but the, here's the kicker with the auctions. Typically, you've got to have the money within like two to three hours. So you either got to have a line of credit or you got to have some money setting aside because you have to go pay for that house within two or three hours at the courthouse. And you're usually responsible for all the liens, any taxes that are due. So that's where you want to do your due diligence, if possible, <laughs> before you get to that auction and see if you can find a title company to help you run any kind of searches that are out there. Um, we tried to do a few of them. By the time we got involved, there were so many people. Well, actually, banks were trying to buy them back at that point. There were so many investors. I went to a few of them just because I wanted to learn what the process was, but we never purchased one that way. But they are a great way to get a home, but you've got to know what you're doing or you can get really messed up. And I will tell you this, if you buy a home, there's certain auctions, there's, you need to check your, your laws, but there's certain ones that you can purchase and they still have six months to come back and pay those dues and get that house back. Or is it three to six months? It's three to six months, you have to check your laws. So I know some investors, if they buy it from an auction, they literally let it sit there for three, six months, whatever the rule is, the law is. They will not touch it, do any kind of investment, any fixing up, anything, because there's been a few of them I know that have kind of got hit hard on that. The sellers have come back, paid all the dues, said, nope, we want the house back, and they took it back. Mm. So there's a few on auctions are great, but you've got to figure out your laws in your area. And yeah. Um, a couple of the guys at the office were telling me about that, that they kind of ran across that. And I was like, whoa, that would be a bad thing. There's a lot of things to think about during an auction. Yep. You can go look at the house, but you can't go in. Nope. There's all kind of stuff. And most of the time, from my experience, we were not investing after 2008. I kick myself every day for that. But uh, the banks are in the auction room they are jacking the bids up and they're not going to take they've got a certain price and they just they bid it up to that yep. and then at that price they'll just fix it up and flip it you know okay. they, they have other ways to get or they let it go yeah and most of the time it's seems like an inside deal to me it seems like the the bank agent has got it worked out with the guy over there what he's going to take and that's just kind of how it is but and I, I don't know but i do have a funny story i'd like to tell for about are you about done with auction oh i'm done that was yeah that's the questions i've been asked and so we just thought we would just 
this is a funny story, and I hope George Gammon doesn't mind me telling it. He didn't tell me not to tell it. So one night I got to hang out with George Gammon at his condo in Phoenix, and um, he was telling me about, and we hung out until wee hours in the morning talking about everything, and uh, he was telling me about when he got into rental properties because he was interested in how I got into rental properties. And he was, he'd heard that you had to have the money right then. Right. You know, you couldn't, oh, okay, I want it, I'll pay it in a little while. He had it right then. So George <laughs> was buying these houses and going up to the, uh, the courthouse with suitcases full of money. <laughs> bringing bags of money in there and they're like what what are what you doing you? <laughs> but they didn't know what to do did they no they didn't they didn't know what to do it was like oh you told me i did the money but that's funny <laughs> but that's the kind of attitude i want everybody to have this watching this video that's funny whatever it takes yep. it doesn't matter get it do it go if you think no i won't go around the house there won't be anybody there do it anyway Go, no, I'm not going to knock on five neighbors' doors. I'm not going to walk the neighborhood. And I, I'd just set out and I would walk and be like, all right, I'm going to knock on everybody's house on this side anyway. of the street. And I'd just, dun, dun, dun. hey, I'm Chris and I'm buying houses. You would not believe the people that called me back. Yes. Hey, this house came for something. Be nice to them. Just be yeah. you. Be yeah. nice. Tell them what you're doing and just go to the next house. And a lot of people just shut the door in my face. That's fine, but that's their loss. I would have been their friend if they would have, you know, <laughs> opened up. I'm I'm a social butterfly, according to you. Yes, he is. So that was just a funny story I want to throw that's in right here. That's funny. So he showed up with cash. Yeah, that's a suitcase funny. full of money. That was pretty wild. <laughs> no, he does. And you guys, if you do something like this, you really need to find somebody. Either one, get your real estate license, which I highly recommend because then you kind of know what's going on. Or two, you need a good real estate agent to help you with the details of contracts and stuff. That will save your butt we'll on so many different things. Well, I don't know your contracts. I don't know your laws and your and I only know Louisiana. Well, we'll do a video on how to find houses, how to find real estate agents. How to, we'll, we'll, I'm going to start breaking these down as we get into the real estate collapse because I want you guys to be ready when we get there. Well, I would recommend now. I would recommend starting net. I am already networking now in other in other uh, well, states. We are too, yeah. And so, I hey, just, what's your what's your what's your uh, what does it look like in your area? What's going on? And what are your laws? You know, what does it require? And I, I would start doing it now because it takes time to learn that kind of stuff and the ins and the outs and the the. I think so. I agree 100. percent I just don't want to get everybody pumped up no. on real estate because no. they, it's a time. You know, it's ready. No. I, I found this house. I start getting these emails. I found this house. And I, I, uh. No, no. Learn right now is your time to learn. Time to learn and get everything ready. Yep. Like you could buy a house right now. You know what to do. You've picked but it out. But some markets might come sooner than ours. So. Absolutely no. That's what that's my timing is my. That is my Achilles heel. That is what I'm not good at. So sorry, you're early. You're welcome. <laughs> sorry, you're welcome. But anyway. That's all, all right. I got. That's all I got. Guys, thank you for being here. You're awesome. We'll see you in the next one. But don't forget, I almost forgot. Have an awesome, awesome day later. We're going to enjoy this fire. <laughs>